Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This is the final part in my 2015 Hackintosh series. Uh, this is part 4. So as usual, if you haven't seen part 1 to 3 yet, I'm going to leave annotations up there and links in the description down below. Um, this part isn't necessarily directly related to the building process of this Hackintosh. This is, um, basically, I'm just going to sort of weigh up the pros and cons. I went into this project completely blind, and um, I've come out with, with sort of my thoughts on Hackintosh in general. Pros then. Firstly, it is much, much, much cheaper to build your own Hackintosh than to buy the equivalent Mac from Apple. I went onto the Apple Store and tried to find CPU-wise the, the equivalent Mac that I would have to buy to rival performance-wise this Hackintosh. And basically, it's the top-of-the-line Mac Mini. That Mac Mini costs £799. This Hackintosh, which is infinitely more upgradable and expandable and is a quicker machine, everything cost a squeak under £399. Half the price for a better, better machine. Obviously the Mini has its um, advantages, you're not going to find this hiding away in a TV cabinet anytime soon. Um, the, mini, the Minis are extremely portable, that isn't necessarily that portable. Um, but the Mini laptop CPU, laptop i5 CPU, um, that's a desktop i3, very, very similar um, performance-wise. Um, Mini, you got RAM soldered to the motherboards. This, I can upgrade it. There's 8 gigs in the Mini, 8 gigs in that. If I want to upgrade to 16, I can if I want to in the future. The Mini, you're stuck with what you got. Hard drive in the Mini, you can't replace it without voiding the warranty, which is just unbelievable. This has two full-size hard drives and an SSD. Um, so, infinitely quicker, again. Um, graphics, the Mini has integrated Intel Iris graphics. This has desktop grade GTX 660 graphics and integrated Intel HD 4600 graphics on the CPU. The Mini, you can't upgrade it if I want a new graphics card in that. Just plug it in. You can you can get the, get the idea. The amount of upgradability and expandability you get for so much less money, it is just mind-boggling. Obviously you pay the premium for that Apple logo, but if you're willing to put up with the headache of getting the thing up and running, and if, you, if you're not planning on, for example, taking advantage of what Apple has to offer in terms of Apple Care, then economy-wise, just common sense-wise, building a Hackintosh just makes more sense. You can also build your Hackintosh to your exact specification and that is a humongous bonus because being able to build something to your exact specification means you can also build it to your exact budget. Apple, they compartmentalize their products enormously. The Mac Mini, great little things and they are by far the cheapest in the line but you're stuck with Intel integrated graphics um, and you can't even get a quad core option anymore. If you want decent graphics, you have to go all the way up to a Mac Pro. So Apple, they make you pay money um, for individual features. Say you don't need necessarily need that much graphics horsepower, but you still want a beastly CPU. You can do that and, and put up with, with pretty low-grade graphics. You can, you can do that when you're building your Hackintosh because you can build it and customize it exactly how you want to. So in my opinion, that is the biggest um, biggest pro of building a Hackintosh over buying uh, a Mac from Apple. Cons then? Um, limitations with regards to supported hardware. Say there's that motherboard that you really, really, really want, or that new AMD processor that um, AMD have just released. No, not doing anything, you can't, you, you, you can't do it. And as much as build, building a Hackintosh allows you to customise your build to your specification, it's still limited in some regards. Um, you're, base, you're, you're on a shortlist, a pretty big shortlist to be honest at this point in time. Uh, pretty much any modern Intel CPU will run OS X. Um, pretty much any graphics card is supported in OS X these days. And pretty much any motherboard, um, especially if you go gigabytes, 
it's a, a walk in the park, but still that point still stands that you have to abide by the confines of what OS X physically supports. So not necessarily for me, um, not necessarily a, a drawback for me considering I'm a bit of a, an Nvidia and Intel fanboy, but still, the point still stands for AMD people and people who are maybe running older machines it's still still definitely um, a con. And of course then another con, um, the actual OS X install and getting everything up and running and working perfectly. Some people can do it just like that. I was very very lucky in my case, there was only a couple of issues that I ran into. For example, audio. I installed Multibeast, installed the audio through Multibeast. It still didn't work. Why didn't it work? I had to research for an hour to find that the actual um, audio chip on my motherboard isn't working with the Kex that was released in the Yosemite version of Multibeast. So I had to go back and get the Mavericks Kex and install the the Mavericks version of Multibeast and do it that way. Audio works fine now, but that took a couple of hours to sort of wrap my head around it. Secondly, um, I was getting the odd freeze every, every now and again. For example, halfway through exporting a video, bang, crash, gone. Uh, the the whole computer just froze, so again that took another few hours to to find a boot flag that fixed that. Again, I found the boot flag and now it's working fine. But you need to be able to have a lot of patience. You need to sit down and go. All right, then hit me with anything you got because it's it's a it's a raffle basically. Um, people are drawn to Apple products because they just work. Hackintosh is don't. They require a lot of care and attention and um, especially if you're working on an older machine um, compatibility isn't going to be there and getting everything working as it would on a Mac it requires still to this day a fair amount of effort um, so that obviously is the biggest drawback of um, building getting a Hackintosh setup. So yeah in my case the pros outweighed the cons 10 to 1. Um, I have got a machine that cost me under £400 that if I went to Apple, I couldn't get. I literally just could not get an equivalent machine to this with the graphics card, the expandability, the upgradability. So for me, it's perfect. I know for some, it's not um, not perfect at all, but um, as long as you have the patience, then in my opinion, it is 100% worth it. Um, I went into this project, as I said, completely blind and I came out of it feeling a lot better than I went into it with, if you get me. Um, it was a lot, lot easier than I expected. So then, time for some questions. Um, lots and lots of people have asked what happened to the Asus H81i Plus um, motherboard. Back, it wasn't even in the official official part one. Um, by then I'd already got, got a different motherboard. But back in my December 2014 uh, vlog, where I initially announced that I was going to be building a Hackintosh, I said that I was going to be using um, an Asus motherboard. I bought an Asus motherboard and I was going to use that Asus motherboard um, for my build, but it was dead on arrival, so I had to send it back. I got a refund, the seller was really, really helpful, but um, I just sort of went instead of getting a replacement, can I actually part exit for a gigabyte board? And honestly guys, I am so, so glad I ended up with a gigabyte board because any any other manufacturer than gigabyte, you're gonna be, there's a lot more work required. Gigabyte boards are designed, basically, um, to be run in, in a Hackintosh system. The build quality is awesome, the features are awesome. You do pay a little bit extra for, for a gigabyte board because they are decent decent motherboards. Um, but yeah, basically it was dead on arrival. I had to send it back and uh, get a new one. MDH Gaming asks, did you consider the Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212? Um, yeah, I did. Um, the shortlist is basically the Zalman cooler I got in there in the moment and the Cooler Master cooler. Um, I ended up going to the Zalman cooler because this is a budget build. I mean, under four hundred pound for that for that build is is pretty impressive, and I was trying to shave five ten pound off wherever I possibly could. And um, the Zalman cooler got really, really incredibly good reviews, 
and so did the Cooler Master, but the Cooler Master was £15 more expensive, so I just went, uh, is it really worth the extra cash, and I decided to go with the Zalman. I'm pleased with the Zalman Cooler. Um, if I did do the build again, I probably would go with the Cooler Master, because um, it idles at a lower RPM, um, even though this computer is by far the quietest thing I've ever used in my life. Um, by far the loudest component in this system is um, the CPU cooler. Um, it idles at 1200 RPM and it maxes out at 1500. So it keeps everything cool but it idles at a really high RPM so you can always hear it. Um, I'm used to Apple machines where they're completely silent unless you're doing something quite intense. So yeah, it keeps everything cool but idling um, it's just louder than the rest of the system. Specs Bean Farmer asks, what is MSATA compatibility like in OS X? Um, perfect. As you know, I'm running a 128 gig um, MSATA SSD, and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to install anything. I didn't have to touch anything. It was plug and play. Worked just as any other hard drive um, would. It was, it was perfect. Tech TV and a couple of others asked, what the hell is your RAM setup like? Um, if you watch part one, I believe I said I was going to be running two 4 gig sticks um, for a total of 8 gigs. Um, but then in part two, and uh, well, part two, you only saw one gig, uh, it's not, one stick of RAM. So people are asking then, oh, okay, are you running single channel, dual channel? What, what sort of configuration have you got going? Um, I do have two 4 gig sticks. It was just a case of, I got two sticks, two 4 gig sticks of uh, Patriot Signature memory. Um, one of them didn't work for whatever reason. I tried my best to get it working, but it just refused to work. So I sent it back, was itching to get the machine set up. So I just proceeded with, with the videos um, with the one stick installed. So I was running what, uh, 4 gigs at the beginning in single channel. But um, while I was waiting for the other 4 gig to come, Hugh Rax asks, are you sure the Core i3 and GTX 660 is going to be enough? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine, honestly, it is absolutely fine. You saw in part 3 in the benchmark videos, um, it's, it's perfect. Temperatures, the Core i3 runs ice cold. I've never seen it go over 65 degrees Celsius, and that is while encoding a video for an hour in handbrake. Um... The GPU, I, I haven't seen go over 70, and that's while running Far Cry 4 maxed out. So, at the moment, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. Final Cut, I've got enough RAM for Final Cut. A CPU power, I've got enough for literally everything, and the GPU is handling games really well. So, as it stands at the moment, I'm fine. But the pro of having a Hackintosh is, when I want to upgrade, I can just bung in a new, a new processor or bung in a new graphics card. Um, probably the first upgrade I will make um, will be the processor, but I, that's a long way down the line because that little Core i3 in there is a beast. Brian asks, how many PCI uh, ports are on the motherboard? Um, well, there's one PCIe um, X16, that's uh, a 2.0 slot I believe, um, obviously that is filled up by, by my GTX 660, and then there's one mini PCI Express on uh, on the motherboards, which is occupied by the Wi-Fi card. Um, that's pretty much standard fare across all mini ITX boards. Um, they have one expansion slot, and then some of them have um, mini PCI. Point Chinko Five asks, "What are your idle CPU temperatures like?" Um, idling, as I said, the Zalman cooler is quite loud. Well, not loud, but it it. it spins quite quite heavily even idling so my CPU temperatures believe it or not were around 25 degrees Celsius um, the thermal paste I used also to thank for that a little bit I think as well um, the GPU idles at around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius um, so yeah it, it, it's ice cold this machine um, and the power supply kicks out barely no heat whatsoever. It's a really really cool power supply um, I was used to turning off the radiator in my in my room because the Mac Pro would heat it up I, I have to turn the radiator on now because this thing just runs so so cool um, Under loads as I said I've never seen the GPU go over 70 and I've never seen the CPU go over 65 so um, all in all this is a really really cold running machine
Time difference 13 asks, are you using Windows for anything other than gaming? Um, no. I, I, um, have it so it starts up in big picture mode. Um, Steam opens on start. Basically, I'm using Windows as my game, game console OS. I have my Xbox One controller, but I, here, um, I just plug this in and, uh, it opens up in big picture mode and it's basically like having a console in front of me and I like that. I'm not a big fan of, of playing games on a keyboard and mouse don't ask me why but I just ne never never have been um, so at the moment no just gaming just gaming. Um, OS 10 does everything else that I ask it to um, I do like the look of Windows 10 though so we'll see. I said the same thing about Windows 8 but um, I am really quite hopeful for Windows 10 so uh, we'll see I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, mate, but um, I think it's Jacobs asks, um, does it feel different using a Hackintosh um, over a Mac? And no, not at all. I was expecting, because I've always had this, this weird little love affair with like PowerPC Macs and stuff, um, but no, it feels like using a normal Mac. Um, it, it's as stable as any, any Mac I've ever used. It's, quicker than any other Mac I've ever used and um, yeah if you if you actually took took the computer off the desk and just had the monitor in front of me I wouldn't be able to guess what what machine it was um, so yeah no it, it, it feels like using a, a genuine genuine Mac last but not least then John asks it's a Hackintosh so it has to have a name uh, what have you called it um, now this is a ridiculous um, little story so I bear with me but basically the Hackintosh in world everybody has a name for their Hackintosh um, the people in the Tony Mac x86 forums are saying you gotta name it so um, the dude abides so I was sat there looking at the machine thinking alright what can I name you what can I name you um, I was looking at the machine and it, obviously it's white it's primarily white but it also has little holes black holes um, for ventilation on the top and the sides and then um, S uh, Slow Cheater by Red Hot Chili Peppers came on um, my iTunes. And then it just clicked, it just went like that. And um, Snow Cheater, it just, it, it's so corny, but it just made sense. Slow Cheater, Red Hot Chili Peppers, the whole OS X cat naming thing, Cheater, Leopards. Uh, don't ask me why, guys, but um, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, that's what I've named it, Snow Cheater. So there we go, we're done. Four parts of this 2015 Hackintosh series, done and dusted, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, I'm really, really grateful if you've stuck around for all four videos. Um, the response I've got has just been amazing. Um, if you want to see super nice high resolution images of the Hackintosh, then I'm going to be um, posting them on my Flickr account. I'm going to leave an annotation up there and uh, links in the description down below. Um, but yeah, I think we're pretty much done here, guys. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.